Imagine a world before the Cambrian. You wouldn't have any ammonites or trilobites or even opabinia swimming through the seas. Instead, you had strange organisms like Dickinsonia, which looked kind of like a ridged pancake, except the ridges aren't even lined up with one another. Instead, they're slightly offset from one another in a kind of glide symmetry. However, this video isn't about Dickinsonia. It's about an animal with even stranger symmetry, Tribrachidium. Tribrachidium and its relatives represent the only known fossils with a kind of three-way and spiral symmetry. And this isn't quite like what you would get in some animals like jellyfish, where there's a radial symmetry, where essentially you can divide it in half in any line and it's fine. Instead, Tribrachidium had three distinct ridges running down its sides. In fact, there's really only one other group of fossil organisms that really show anything even kind of similar to this kind of spiral symmetry. And I'll get to those later. But first, what was Tribrachidium? Well, it was probably an animal, and researchers have been able to tell this based on the fossils of it. Because the fossils aren't even of the body, instead they're actually just molds. So essentially, Tribrachidium would have lived at the bottom of the oceans, and occasionally sand or mud would have collapsed and fallen on top of Tribrachidium, and it wouldn't for whatever reason be able to dig itself out. Eventually though, the body part of Tribrachidium would just disappear, and that could be through very normal causes like it just rotting away, or potentially even certain things going through the rock as it was hardening that dissolved the body parts of Tribrachidium away. We don't really know for sure what the exact mechanic was, but that left us with the impression of what the top of Tribrachidium would have looked like left in the rock. Essentially, you can kind of think of it like a full body footprint, but only from the top. And the fact that Tribrachidium was pre-Cambrian is probably a big part of the reason we have any fossils of this animal. Because once you start getting into the Cambrian, there's a lot more animals that have started burrowing, such as annelid worms, and that helps to break up any of these kinds of footprints that might actually exist. Now, still we could have potentially gotten Tribrachidium if it did live into the Cambrian, but we don't really have any fossils of things that seem like they're related to it. So it really does seem like it was limited to just this one time period of before the Cambrian. And so while it seems really limiting to only have the top of this animal, some researchers were able to do some very inventive things to be able to understand that, yeah, it probably was an animal. And that's specifically because they could have told how it fed. And its feeding style is incredibly, incredibly bizarre. And in fact, from what I could tell, there's nothing like it around today in the modern day, or even throughout most of the rest of the fossil record, other than some of its very close relatives. And that's because it used gravity to filter feed. Again, during the Cambrian, animals were starting to move through sediment, and that includes some animals essentially sifting through sediments to find prey. And it doesn't seem like Tribrachidium had any of that going on because we, again, don't find any kind of trace marks from animals doing that in the rocks we find Tribrachidium in, which means it was doing something else within the water column, the very shallowest part of the water column, but still parts of the water column. What the researchers were able to find out by using digital models is that as water flowed over the top of Tribrachidium, it would essentially stop in certain places. And the organisms that settled out of that still water would settle towards the apical pit in the center of Tribrachidium. And this was basically the organism's mouth. So it would feed from the animals that fell into this pit, kind of like a sarlacc. And the really interesting thing is, this is totally unlike anything we have today. Instead, it's a much, much more passive system of feeding. When we think about modern filter feeders, we can think of things like some kinds of crinoids and even coral, which essentially have little tendrils that they reach out with in order to grab small nutrients and organisms that are floating on the currents, rather than just letting the water stop and letting all of the organisms and nutrients settle out of it naturally. And some organisms take it even a step further having a pumping system. For example, mussels are able to pump water through their shells in order to increase the chance that they'll find more organisms and nutrients in the water. Meanwhile, again, Tribrachidium just sat there, menacingly. Or at least menacingly, if you were something small and in that water column that couldn't escape from the still water. And this ability to stop water really all comes down to those three distinct ridges that it had on the top of it. They had evolved that way for a very specific reason. And because of those ridges, it seems like no matter which way the water was going, the water would have settled over that apical pit. Meaning no matter which way the tide turned, it was fine. It fed in a way entirely unlike anything else we know has made it really hard to pin down, other than very generally an animal, what Tribrachidium actually was. But there was at least one group that had at least somewhat similar rotational symmetry. 
Endrioasteroidea, which are a group of now extinct echinoderms. The thing is though, as I've mentioned, Tribrachidium, with the name being Tri for three, had a three-way version of this rotational symmetry. Meanwhile, the Endrioasteroidea had five-way symmetry, the same way that all echinoderms have. Because when we think about echinoderms, we're talking about things like starfish, urchins, and crinoids. So it's still very different from anything that does exist that has at least a somewhat passing resemblance. Also, it doesn't seem like the Endrio asteroids actually fed using this same system. It just seems like they, some of them at least, rotated some parts of their body and were likely using different arms that were reaching into the water column to feed rather than it being at all similar to the gravity settling that things like Tribrachidium were using. This means that when you take anything beyond a passing glance at some animals that kind of resemble Tribrachidium, there's still not a lot of similarities. And because of this, some researchers have suggested making an entire new phylum for Tribrachidium and some of its other close relatives that have been found from the Precambrian. And to understand the importance of this, phyla are big. All chordates are a single phyla, and chordates essentially just means vertebrates plus our closest relatives, the tunicates. All arthropods, so crustaceans, insects, chelicerates, which are things like the arachnids, all of those are one phylum. Phyla are massive, and so to claim there's an entire new one just based on fossils is really hard to try and prove, but at the same time, Tribrachidium is unlike anything we have. And the thing is, as a phylum, it wouldn't be just Tribrachidium. There's other organisms too, specifically Albumaris and Anfesta, which seem to be pretty closely related, also come from the Precambrian, and between the three of these, these fossils come from places like Australia, but also Russia and Ukraine, meaning that they were very widely distributed, even during the Precambrian. So fundamentally, this means one of three things. The first thing is that they were very successful up until the end of the Precambrian and then died out very quickly. An alternative is that they are related to something that we either don't know about yet, or it took a very strange evolutionary pathway that led into something that we do know of, and they actually did survive into the Cambrian just in an evolved form that we just don't recognize the relationship to yet. And finally, it could be that they were very successful, but died out more gradually before the Cambrian and this would have pretty big implications for what happened at the start of the Cambrian, because we normally associate the Cambrian with the Cambrian explosion, this big burst of diversity in life. But if Tribrachidium and its relatives died out slowly, maybe they were outcompeted by other organisms evolving to filter feed at the same time. And maybe that means the Cambrian explosion wasn't quite as much of an explosion as we thought. It's really just when we first started getting good fossils of what was already there. All in all, this means we still need to do a lot of research to understand how life became what it was, because Tribrachidium is unlike anything that we know of, and it helps to show that we potentially may not know as much as we think we do about even well-studied events like the Cambrian explosion. So really what it does to help us understand is we might just need to reconsider what we consider Cambrian, because the Cambrian's largely been considered when we start seeing evidence of life and widespread life. But Tribrachidium was life. Doesn't it count?